can you help me understand? Like when you walked in here, you said you're a little bit of a mentalist. Was that real? Like, is that? I was kind of fucking with you. Okay. I, think. Yeah. I was gonna say, like, yeah. can you fucking explain to me how they can look at somebody's what face? What did I say to you when I... when you walked in? I think I forgot. Yeah, you said you... you were like, oh, you got married at the White Chapel. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But but yeah. but then I'm because I'm like, dude, when somebody like looks at somebody and they're just like write down the name of their dog and show yeah. it to them, like, what the fuck is that? It's all bullshit. Okay. <laughs> There is That's no. All you gotta say. Thank take, God. Take me undercover with you. This will be a show. <laughs> Let's go undercover to like you know tarot card readers. People that can read your palm, and we'll okay. go sit there, and I'll have a little camera, and I'll like completely expose. It's all cold reading. It's all bullshit. Like somebody says, "Hey, it's listen. It's magic. It's tricks. It's illusions. It's all of that stuff." You know, Houdini spent what half of his life. Debunking yeah, these people. Yeah, because his mom. Yeah, like uh, nineteen twenty six, he died, but his mom lost, died, and he, he's... he lost his mom. He's super upset about that, mm -hmm. and uh, was he? He he so wanted to communicate with her, and. Like all the seance people. Yeah, the Is mediums that, would be like, oh, your mom's talking to me. And and then the he realized the that they were using the same tactics that he would employ doing tricks. So he exposed them and then he got sued and he would go to court. And so his, half of his life, that's what he did. He battled these people. So when he died in 1926 on Halloween, he said to his wife, Bess, I'm going to give you a word because people are gonna claim that they connected to me and contacted me. Ask them what, what I'm telling, telling, you, telling them to, give, to tell you. And so basically they held a seance for 10 years. It was a vigil. It was um, in California on top of the, I think the Roosevelt Hotel. And um, right where my star is, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Which was cool that they tied it together with Houdini. But uh, they had a 10 year vigil there, a seance. And eventually, his uh, wife blew out the light and said that no one was capable of making that connection. And the word that they had before he died that he told his wife would be is the word believe. And in the word believe, in the center of that word is lie. Hmm. So none of them um, That's said, funny. hey, we're contacting V. What's What is he saying? Believe. No one did that. Yeah, what wow. about that guy that would, the, the great Randy? James Randy. Yeah, I knew him. It? I know James Randy when I was 17 years old. I had a <coughs> cable access show <laughs> called Hot Kicks uh, back in the day in Brookhaven, New York. I uh, had him on, and he was the one who came up with me confirming to be called uh, Chris Angel. No shit. Yeah, my, my real name is uh, Christopher Nicholas Sarendakos. Then I had Santos, then I had Sarantis, and then I was thinking about Angel. He's like, Angel, that's a great name for you. You look nothing like an angel, and you have birds in your show. And, and I, I kept it. And uh, I've known him uh, for many, many years. He was always very kind to me. He passed. Um, but uh, but he started a foundation that debunked or proved that it that he, that what people claim to be psychic or supernatural that he couldn't reproduce or explain how it worked. And he did that when he died. The guy that started running his foundation is a guy is a dear friend of mine, Banachek, um, who um, runs that foundation. And uh, they have a million dollars for anybody that can do anything that can't be explained or reproduced. And then I jumped in. I put a million dollars on the line a couple of times to uh, to offer to like some of the Long Island psychic yeah. and all these people just to and they just run. They just run. Yeah. I mean, you remember watching that documentary with me when he would just like go on the Today Tonight Show or whatever it was and. These people would come out, and he's like, okay, well, why don't you do this? And you'll, like, put a box around it, and they, they can't do it. They're like, I just, it's just I'm not feeling yeah. it today. Or we're going to move this pen with our mind. And he said, okay. And he would take, like, little styrofoam and put it on there. I said, okay, move the pen and not with the styrofoam. Because one of the techniques is, is that you blow uh -huh. on the table, which makes the pen go in reverse. Yeah. Um, or there's some other technique. So, like, you know. It, it, yeah, he was on Johnny Carson, and he had a guy named Ori Gella on, mm -hmm. who I did a show with. And Ori Gella claimed that he could bend forks and silverware and all of these different things. And then when I was in front of him, 
I said on television, I said, okay, I'll give you a million dollars. Bend this fork right now because I, I bend forks all the time. No, show me, show, bend. And he wouldn't do it. And he claimed that it was a trick. If I do it now, it's a trick. You know, but what I did back <laughs> then was, and I was just like, so it kind of exposed that it was bullshit. Um, I do want to push back, though, because I feel like there have been some really pretty credible psychic things I'll give you an example mm -hmm. <clears throat> my dad went to see a psychic um, with at the time my stepmom the psychic said your your first wife um, needs to be set free because her ashes have not been spread right like so the psychic knew that my dad a had a first wife b his first wife was dead and the 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 ashes were sitting in an urn on uh, a shelf in my sister's bedroom closet because we just hadn't come up with a, an idea for for spreading these ashes okay so um you ever buy uh, a car and as soon as you take it out on the road, you realize, oh, there's my car over there. There's my car over there. Uh -huh. You ever? See, and, but when you don't have that car, you never notice that. So uh -huh. here's what happens. It's basically called cold reading. So you weren't there actually listening to I the wasn't. chain of events. And if I guarantee you, if you videotape that and you listen to the playback, um, you would see, and I could point out exactly the method of how they do it. They, they talk about a lot of things. People have expressions, body language, they're engaged, they might even say something. So if I'm talking general, generalizing about different things and I see that you have an interest in something, I'm going to feed off of your body language, how you react, your facial expressions, if you respond to me, and I'm going to constantly go and go further and further once I hit something. I'm gonna start going more in that direction and I'm gonna start digging and trying to see, okay, which path am I going? I'm changing paths constantly. Then at the end of that process, you're gonna leave there and the only thing you're gonna remember is what you want to remember that's important to you. That's why Houdini had such a problem with people taking advantage of people that lost a loved one because people would go to psychic and say, I love this person, I miss him. And people would take, the psychics would take these people, these vulnerable people, their money, and essentially just give them false hope and just read them and respond to them based on the information that they were gathering while they were talking to that person. It's called cold reading. And it's just, you know, I've hypnotized you know what, 150 people to remove their clothes. Um, I've, I've done a lot of these things. I've exposed this stuff. It is, you know, the sad part about it is, is that we take this and it doesn't become just entertainment or a trick anymore. We're taking this and we're putting such a value on it. And we're putting a value on it because it goes to our heart with somebody that we love and this most intimate connection that we have as humans. And now I'm exposing that it's bullshit. And now you feel like, oh my God, this thing that I thought, it, it's kind of like when you find out Santa Claus mm -hmm. as a kid, yeah. it's, there's no Santa Claus. I can assure you, if people had the ability to do that, why on 9-10 they did not predict 9-11? Mm -hmm. Why are they sitting there trying to take $10, $20, $40 for a reading when they can literally just predict what a lottery would be? I mean, there's so many reasons and so many facts. But for me, being somebody who's been doing magic since I was six years old and I'm not a specialist in anything. I'm a general practitioner, but I know a bit about all the different disciplines within the art. Um, from my perspective, I would love to see anyone do something for me, 
couple people that I have a lot of respect for that we can't explain it or reproduce it. Have you ever been? And we put our, we put our money on the line for that.